Hey guys, we are back. We are going to get into our first semifinal here in just a moment. It's going to be between the two players who we saw sweep their opponents so far in the tournament, Saviz versus Forsen. How are you feeling, Chaki? I know Forsen probably seemed uh, more confident of the two, but uh, confidence uh, certainly does not correlate with results when it comes to Hearthstone. Yeah, I mean, I think I like Paladin a little more than Hunter, but... You know, it's not like those two decks are going to have to go head-to-head. -head. It is Conquest, so they could get a win off another deck. Could come down to a mirror match or something of the other classes. I think either player has a reasonable shot. I would slightly favor Savitz, probably. I think I like Paladin. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that Savitz is running a Hobgoblin in Warlock, which tells me that he maybe um, had a bit more thought process towards the decks, uh, and maybe we just didn't see it in his other two decks. Uh, I also agree that, that Paladin seems to be the, the slightly stronger class overall, but I feel if the Paladin is matched up against the Hunter, the, pal uh, the Paladin's probably going to lose uh, because Unleash and the face damage uh, is, is pretty strong. Yeah, it could happen. Uh, I mean, kind of depends on how much taunt Savit's put in. You can play Sledge Belcher. We haven't really seen that card yet. Still legal. Still pretty powerful. Uh, there's Sinjin, Defender of Argus, Coghammers... Tyrion. Lots of taunt you can put in. It really just depends how much you do put in. Uh, Savit said he forgot a few choice cards that he would like to put in. Mm -hmm. So his decks might be a little weaker than we're expecting. Didn't affect him last match, though. So, What do you think about Sledge Belcher? Um, honestly, like playing Arena so much as I have, and this is pretty close to that, by the way, uh, Sledge Belcher isn't actually that great of a card. Often it's actually worse than Fen Creeper. So. Ooh. Well, in Constructed, generally, it's powerful enough that in an, right. that in an aggressive deck, you need two Iron Gowls. So, Absolutely. it's a pretty powerful card with counterplay in Constructed. And in this, the counterplay kind of got removed. So, I would like to see a little more of it. I'm not mm -hmm. sure it'd be the greatest card, because sometimes if you're just behind on board against these zoo decks, it doesn't end up tanking that much damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems that taunts in general have been pretty good. Um, yeah, seems yeah, good. One, I'm, I, you're right, I'm pretty surprised to see it. Not One of the out. main issues with the taunt is you're basically the reactive player, and your opponent gets the choice of using Mortal Coil, Abusive, whatever buffs they have to kind of break through it. So you, you really want to be the proactive player in this format is what we've seen. I feel like Sludge Belcher is also proactive. If you have a lot of small minions and your opponent plays like a minion that you can't or don't want to trade into, the Sludge Belcher just gives you uh, usually two turns of uh, face damage. Yeah. Now, uh, there is a Magma Rager in Force in the Sand, kind of going back to what we were talking about. Uh, if you do screw up on the rules, you get a Magma Rager. That's the first penalty card you get. Mm -hmm. So that is why there's a Magma Rager in Force in Sand. Probably not going to be very good against the deck flooding your board with 1-1s. So. No. Um, what do you think here about the uh, the muster? The muster actually seems a bit better because next turn you can do uh, Black and Technician and then the Abusive. He goes to Black and Technician. Um, I guess it's a, it's a faster removal threat for the Imp Gang boss. Yeah, it's basically the question of which one do you want to attack with first, the weapon and three one ones or a three five. And I think I agree with you because like kinda of looking at how it panned out, you would much rather have the uh well, it pans out pretty well either way with this abusive sergeant, but mm -hmm. you'd probably rather have had attacking priority with these one ones. Uh that way you would just get to clean up Probably the entire board rather than just a little bit of it. Okay, well, he still gets most of it here. Um, Saviz is certainly a dominant position where he has uh, a pretty good 5 drop on turn 5. He has the lead on the board, and he has a Peacekeeper if things go horribly wrong. Yeah, the Peacekeeper is one of the best cards in the format if you can get ahead. Because it basically neutralizes all of the... You know, there's not many swing cards to begin with, and if your opponent does have one, like maybe a Fell Reaver on turn 5, rather than killing it, you can just ignore it and Eldor Peacekeeper it. You know it can't be silenced. Uh, almost every silence, besides Earthshock, is not allowed to be played. So, 
it's going to be pretty rough coming back here for Forsen. Yeah, as is always the case if you have the fewer number of creatures uh, from what we've seen so far. <laughs> Actually, I think there is no comeback. I think there's just no way that you can come back from this board. Yeah, Paladin has just looked really strong because Muster for Battle is just insane at locking down the board. And yeah. from what we've seen, once you lock down the board, it's pretty much game over. But what if what if Forsen gets to drop 10 attack points next turn on turn 6? Through that, two Magma Ragers. Now, how many health points is he dropping, Crip? <laughs> couple. <laughs> A couple. Yep. Yeah. Well... That's probably gonna do it. Uh, yeah. Do you? You probably don't show the bang rangers. <laughs> okay, he's gonna show. <laughs> okay, Savit says a little bit of a, a laugh. Yep, Savit knows. He knows what it feels like to be in in Forsen's shoes. Yeah. His first hand experience. But uh, it's certainly better to be uh, on the other side of the board as he is in this situation. I mean, Savit has, uh, he's drawn out both Magma Ragers in all of the matches that his opponent has had it. When Trump had to replace those Whirlings yeah. Affirmatics, they popped right back up. So. Um, one interesting aspect of the tournament that I actually, I actually didn't even know until now is that uh, the players can see each other's cameras as they play. Oh. Well, maybe that's, I, I maybe didn't that's know that either. Yeah, maybe they're a bit more uh, encouraged to be more animated and stuff, and it adds an extra dynamic to it. I think that's really fun. I think that's something that, you know, it, it's it's an aspect of a live tournament that's kind of cool. That's uh, really not that difficult to implement. So it's uh, it's cool that they uh, went that extra effort this time. Yeah, I mean, in in live tournaments, I definitely like seeing my opponent staring him down. This is a bit more of a fun tournament, so maybe yeah. not as intense, but. Still kind of fun to see your opponent. All right. Well, Saviz gets that first match point. Uh, Saviz is uh, playing Shaman against Forsen playing Shaman. Uh, looks like Forsen has the lead. Will it last, though? Looks like it will. Ooh. Or not. Well, Lightning Storm is, if you ask anybody, pretty much the Shaman versus Shaman card, uh, regardless of format. So, could it's been help... Still yeah. behind. It's been so long since we've actually seen like a control shaman versus control shaman. But from what I remember back from like early 2014 was that uh, the shaman who uh, like used up lightning storm last was yeah. usually ahead. You so, want to be as greedy as possible usually. Right. Now this is a little different because cards like Fell Reaver will kill you pretty quick. Uh, these decks are playing a lot of burn spells, but generally, if you're not afraid of death, you want to hold on to it and bait out as many minions as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, two Fire Elementals and a Fell Reaver next turn with Stealth and Taunt. Yeah, I think the Fell Reaver is going to be the big story here. Uh, I would. Yeah. I'd probably Cloak Field something. I'm not sure which one, though. Mm, still really, really behind, but you have to play that Reaver. You just have to go for the tempo. Oof. Yeah, it's going to throw it out. I mean, the the Defender of Argus can help a lot in coming back. But Will we see that? I think we might just see uh, Forsen dropping his own Reaver, and maybe even yeah, going yeah, yeah, face. Sure. Well, I mean, from Savita's perspective, the Defender of Argus is pretty nice. Mm-hmm. You can you can even put it down on that Fell Reaver and trade it into his Fell Reaver. Ta going back to again, there's not many one damage cards. I mean, there's Fire Elemental since they are shamans. Yeah. Shaman kind of gets to bypass the rule set in this format. They just get to play everything they want. Yeah, but uh, the flip side of that is that shaman sucks. So uh, not bad. Pretty good in this format, man. Yeah, pretty good comparatively. Uh, but in general, Shaman has been uh, not a very highly picked... Oh, Double Rock Biter. Not a very highly picked class. I think I'd just go face here. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, things are starting to turn around pretty uh, in a pretty rough way uh, here for Civis. 
Uh, the Argus doesn't really do that much, though. Yeah, I mean, it's what you have to play, though. It's, you? it's basically all you have. Um, Storm if, doesn't do much. What if you Argus two small minions? Yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I like the that. eight. The eight eight hits the the four four tinker. That's a, that's pretty much what I was thinking. You're trying mm. to mill your opponent a lot, and also develop a, an annoying board. Hope they don't have much. You can also get a little bit of info with each of these discards to see mm -hmm. some stuff that you know he won't have. Uh, so Savitz is playing pretty slowly, and now he knows there's no no lava wow. burst left. Uh, one hex at most. One hex at most. So you might see him just go face. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen Earth Shocks, so oh. I think that is why he is not going. Yeah, you, you could get really punish, basically just die instantly. But at the same time, Force and like may have not put in Earth Shock in this deck. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> Might have just forgotten, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, he was in a panic, everyone was in a panic. It's it's not easy to uh, really make a refined deck in 15 minutes here. Well, Hex has got to be pretty good here. Uh, it is, but I feel like you kind of have to Lightning Storm this turn as well. Because yeah. if you Lion Storm next turn, you can't Mouse Dormu, so you're really praying for cards in the next two turns, and that's just a bit hopeful. Yeah, he really wants to roll a three here. He does. He, he did. So, he's back on board. Uh, and now, basically, it's on Force to kind of draw out some way to kill wow. him. Well, he's got it. Well, he can just stealth his uh, Fire Elemental. Yeah. I think he'll see it. And so, even with the Taunt Totem, this is lethal. So, Savitz needs maybe, like, another Defender of Argus. Right, right. Is nope. Ascension... Oh, that's not it. Is it. Would Ascension have been good enough? Uh, yeah, I yep. think so. It would have been one one life for Savitz. But uh, even though he does get the Taunt Totem, that is not, not quite good enough. Forsen yep. does even it up. And we have our first back and forth series. Forsen puts up a point after Safiz gets the first and is tied up at one and one. Yeah, so we actually have a series on our hands. That's nice for once. <laughs> uh. I I didn't mind the stomping. It was just eh. Stomping's all right. You know, it's like yeah. let's get let's get to the action. Let's get to the players that brought the best right. decks. I mean, in the in these tournaments, it is pretty common to have stomps in the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe due to decks. It looked like it was mostly kind of just due to either luck or having one weak deck. Like, maybe Ratsman's Warlock deck just wasn't quite there mm -hmm. uh, and forced him just 3 0 it. But now we're into a match where we know both players have pretty, you know, reasonable decks. Yeah, and I, um, I really like Saviz's inclusion of Hobgoblin in uh, the, the Warlock here. Maybe there we'll it is. Uh, come up. There's Sludge Belcher. Oh, it's true. And this is a really insane start for Savitz. Basically, the Argent Squire is going to contest everything. And, ooh, really not great for Force and just here powering on two. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go for the 50-50. I think this would just kind of end the game if it hits, but it looks like it didn't. Yeah, we saw him look away a second. Yeah. Nope. So, I mean, Forsen's still in it, for sure. And Mukla, the 5-5 five, five for 3. It's certainly a win more card, and sometimes Hunter's actually pretty hard to be winning on turn 3, but uh, when you're winning, it's pretty good. Yeah, he can actually remove it thanks to the Mortal Coil. I would have liked to see him buff them individually, though, to play around Bow. Uh... Mm -hmm. One of the only cards Hunter has for removal, so... Yeah, it's true. Hunter doesn't have the uh, the explosive trap as they would normally. Yep. It's pretty funny. The production actually has kind of like a little secret is thing, if there's a secret to be played, but the only one that's legal is Snake Trap. Yeah, I believe so. So Freeze, no way. Uh, explosive, no way. Sniper. I don't. I don't even. I don't even know what's on misdirect in terms of text, but I doubt it. <laughs> no, it doesn't have any numbers. Yeah. 
So any secret would be snake trap, and that's not that insane. Mm -hmm. Especially because <laughs> your opponent you, knows. Yeah, not only does your opponent know, but if um, if you're bothering to to play a secret and you know your opponent will be incentivized to not attack into creatures. Ooh. The the face game has <laughs> been the dominant one so far already. Top deck hobgoblin. Yeah. With basically the perfect cards to play it with. Yep. Pretty nuts. That might might have been exactly what he needed. All right. Well, it does stop Fortune's aggression and hit Fortune's deck is seems really strong. Uh, we saw his hunter deck take a pretty dominant win earlier, but um, I think it, it follows in line with most hunter decks where it just kind of runs out of steam fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, he didn't really get too much free damage in on Savits. Like you, you'd really want your opponent to be at about ten to fifteen life by turn seven. Uh, but since the double Argent Squire with Mortal Coil really held down the board early, and two Sledge Belchers in a row, basically going to make sure that Forsen doesn't get through much damage. All right. Well, the um, the Hobgoblin is protected, so these will get a chance to play the Haunted Creeper again next turn for uh, for that extra little buff. Yep. Things are not looking good for Forsen. Okay, he does suicide the uh, Wolf Rider, uh, most likely to play around a juggle or some granular damage, maybe the second Mortal Coil. Now, interestingly enough, we will see some Nazador moves this match. Yeah, we'll have to see probably at least the one from Forsen. I, I hope we see both. <laughs> oh, so I guess he's playing the Taunt here. Yeah. Forsen's like, oh my god. He's going to go face. Yep, and it's so hard to come back from this board. Well, if any card's going to help you come back, it's got to be Nas Dormu. What if Forsen gets another failure? Okay, wait, wait, wait. You, just end your turn right now, and maybe the animations will get him. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna have to see. Savitz has got to go fast. Oh, I really want him to get roped. Uh, no, story move away. Oh, poor juggler. Why did the juggler have to die? Yeah, the juggler had to die because <laughs> time moves quickly. Okay. And uh, is he dead to board? Yeah. So he's yeah, maybe he is. He just has to do it in time. <laughs> yeah. So he's not necessarily dead. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, is he going to make the fatal mistake? Oh, no, this double is your rope. No, it doesn't. It just doubles the animation. There's just more smoke on the screen. Oh, okay, okay. Just yeah. the animation the stacks. It's just harder to see stuff is the idea. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Saviz gets uh, his second point. Uh, someone had to be up a game after that one. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I, I do like the uh, the Hunter of Forsen, so while it doesn't take a game there, I'm, I'm a bit happy that he gets to uh, play another game with it. And um, I think he will... Um. Yeah, I mean, we he played his warlock and failed to get a win, and it, it was the one with a double magma rager, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that that's probably why he may uh, put that deck off again. Yeah, maybe just try to even it up before inevitably losing to a double double magma rager draw. <laughs> well, pretty good start for Savits. These are basically the three cards that have been you know, dominant in securing the board for the Shaman deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's, uh, is is on match point. Uh, he's got the Shaman, which, uh, as we as we keep mentioning, seems to be a pretty good class. Uh, but I have to say, it's it feels like uh, less and less of the strongest class. Um, like, we haven't seen Unbound Elementals, we haven't seen Earth Elementals. I feel those two cards would just be so huge. Yeah, that's pretty interesting that we haven't seen... Either of those. Have we we haven't even seen the, the four drop, the Fire Guard Destroyer. Yeah. So the players mentioned that they missed out on some cards. Maybe those were, you know, along the lines of the cards they missed on. That's true. Kind, kind of tunnel vision on the the mech shaman theme and leave out some non mechs. Alright, well Forsen has a pretty good answer here with the uh, abusive sergeant to slay the mech. 
Yep. And it does also kind of nullify the um, uh, the shaman weapon here. The shaman weapon is just kind of weak. Still have to do it though. Yeah, I mean the shaman weapon will still do a lot of work. Gets to kill off basically two minions no matter what, and uh, buff up another four or five harvest yeti, mm -hmm. uh, replacing the four drop slot in the mech deck. So it's just going to be a bow pass. Oh, that's that's pretty crappy draw there. I guess it gives you something to play on six, kind of. But yeah. you 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 know you're playing the um, the fell reaver here. I think he could have held on to. Well, charge, he, could have, he could have gotten punished by a juggle, but he would have. <laughs> Still, I mean, it, it would have been pretty nice to just have another. I I guess he might have planned on playing the haunted creeper in the power mace, but. Uh, playing a Fell Reaver is not too bad either. Mm -hmm. Well, Forsen uh, basically concedes the board here, and that's not... Whoa! South or Sea Deckhand! Does he? Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, guess. That's uh, Like I said, you just fill your deck with one drops. Uh, still, though. That's a 10-drop. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, Sylvanas might help a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's got to be what you play, yeah. Yeah, but I think here we're just going to see... Uh, oh, my God. I thought he drew that. I guess he didn't. <laughs> no. That was discarded. Yeah, we were probably just going to see the, the Argus play, right? Probably Totem yeah. and Argus. I don't even know if it's worth throwing the jungler out there, because that would be a creature to certainly die. Yeah, um... You probably don't want a juggler because if you juggler, your opponent can kill off the haunted creeper and then oh, yeah, that's true. suicide. If a juggle hits the the four four Sylvanas or the, the five five Sylvanas down to four health, they can suicide it off the juggler. No, actually, just the juggler and then Argus just by itself can trigger the Sylvanas because uh, yeah. you get a juggle from the Argus. I mean, maybe he's just thinking what what's the worst that could happen. Oh, he's going to kill it. Well, he better go face first. <laughs> I think he's going to be greedy. No way you can be greedy for this th two damage. Okay. Uh, so he's going to... That's interesting. That seems like it go could go really wrong, though. Wait a second. Can he guaranteed steal that 10-10? Ten -ten? Possibly. He gets five health. Yes. Yeah, he can guaranteed he can. steal it. With kill command. Yeah. And the Shaman deck doesn't really play... I, I mean, they have burn in their deck, but... Seven is a pretty key number. Uh, he's going to have to take some face damage, most likely, though. Oh, no. Seven's easy. It's just top deck crackle, top deck... Uh, uh, top deck top, spell. Top, top totem spell damage. <laughs> yeah, you top, seven. Just, just top totem them. Yep. Top deck, top totem... Easy game, top roll. So you have to kill command and you have to use your face. Or you don't have to use your face uh, if you kill command. So I think it's really important to save this seven life because it plays around like lava burst. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see if he can top deck and top totem. It seems though that just from the cards that we're seeing discarded from Saviz that he's playing a much more minion heavy deck. Well, no top deck. I wonder if if there's any chance Forsen can... Well, he can only burn... Just destroy the entire deck here? Yeah, he can only burn two at max. Oh, it's really good that he held on to that bow charge to get through mm -hmm. a taunt to him. <laughs> and now he gets to play around uh, spells, kind of. Uh, he can still top deck the Crackle and... And roll the totem. There's a rock biter. There's the earth shock. There's a last hex. Yep. There's double so, lightning bolt. So we got lava burst and crackles. Oh. Well, there's one. Yeah, that can work. Yeah, I mean, Forsen's gonna take. 
Well, not too long to kill him with that second Fell Reaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, next turn is going to be it. Yep, so this is where the top deck to needs to happen. But we have, like, we haven't seen those cards discarded. Like, I, I feel if they're yeah. in the deck, Saviz might even have a guaranteed win here. Nope. <laughs> Guess not. Nope, indeed. And that's, that's it. There's no way you can win. So Forsen is going to tie up the series 2-2. Two two. And down goes Saviz. All right. We have well, that was a, a fun game. Yeah, we have a close one on our hands here. It's going to uh, end up with uh, Saviz's Shaman trying again. I feel like Saviz's Shaman, while Shaman is a really powerful class, that he's not playing some of the cards that were a really powerful part of the class. So, yeah, that deck just seems... It seems good, but it doesn't right. seem, like, broken. Um, and Forsen is playing Warlock again, a good class, but also with some mistakes. So, you know... Uh, both both these decks are kind of limping on in here. They're not they're not yeah. really in their prime. Well, one of the things is when you have such limited time, mm -hmm. both of these players are basically going back to what they they know, which is okay. I'm building a warlock deck. I'm building a zoo deck. I'm building a shaman deck. How about mech shaman? So they're just like kind of going with these archetypes that work really well and constructed, but probably aren't 100 percent optimal in this kind of format. And it's it's kind of showing now that. Maybe Mech Shaman wasn't the greatest. Uh, you do want some mechs, but like Clockwork Gnome, Cogmaster haven't really been that great compared to just putting in Fireguard Destroyer, right? Uh, or even Earth Elemental. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen a single one of those. Yeah, that card's pretty big. When people are trying to hit face, it hits face really hard, and then your opponent can't hit face. Mm -hmm. Another card. Um kind of synergize with those if you were playing more of a mid-range shaman is actually the wind speaker. The wind speaker is it's just a four drop which is pretty rare to get a good one. And yeah. if you're running earth elemental, if you're running fire guard destroyer, like it this does actually come up quite frequently in arena when you get like a six or seven roll and your fire guard destroyer, you just wind fury it into their face and basically guarantee a win. Yeah, and especially when you, you know, it's similar to Arena, but you, you get to pick your cards uh, purely in this format, so you know you have burn in your deck. You mm -hmm. know that you're going to be able to burn your opponent out. And so getting that 15 damage or whatever, pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, Savith barely didn't get there last game, but that's generally the type of game plan he wants to, to have. Mm -hmm. uh -oh, a lot, Forsen, lot of damage output here. Forsen's walking right into the storm, though. Yeah. It has to happen. Yeah. Uh, or not. I'd really like to see a storm because of Defender of Argus. Mm. Okay. Mm. I wonder why he went for Spider Tank over Harvest Golem if you're going to do this. I guess... Mm, I can't really think what it does better. It does more damage by one, so there's that. All right, well, you have the Storm. You even have the Bolt if you want to do a little bit more. It looks like you attacked the Argus, so I guess it didn't quite finish that off. Yeah. But Forsen has the Doom Guard if he really wants it. Yeah, he decides that playing two minions is better. He needs a 33%. Looks like he didn't get it. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Still a little awkward here for Sabid since he's overloaded. Yeah. But, I mean, this turn and the next, he's probably going to drop his entire hand, so does he really mm. need much more? The thing is, he doesn't really... He doesn't really need to play the Lightning Bolt. Yeah. I think I would, um... Yeah, maybe Lightning Bolt the Juggler. Develop a bigger board. It's just so hard to punish. The one damage basically has to be exclusively uh, Mortal Coil at this stage. Yep. So, Thorson basically just going to go for it here. Free like spur part was pretty good. Yeah, I like this too. Now, if you're Savits. I think you check for the juggle first with the mech warper. Yep. 
And if you hit it, I think you go for the 50-50 with the Harvest Golem. Um, sure. it's, it's more than a 50-50 because when you suicide these, uh, the 2-1, you can get a spare part. So Oh, yeah. So You can get an attack spare part. Yeah, so you juggle first. Or freeze. Uh, okay. Just gonna go for the spare part first. Hmm. Well, that's not a very useful one. Yeah, so back to the play that's happening. Yeah, now he has to go for the power mace. Uh, he could just leave it there. That makes him a little weaker to a few cards. But it does let him develop his board and get some face damage. I mean, Can... the Warlock deck doesn't have too many burn cards. Power of Roman can't be played. Soulfire can't be played. Yeah. Second Doomguard would obviously do it. Uh, well, we we saw one abusive, so it couldn't have been like a double abusive draw. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it was a really dangerous draw. Yeah. Lepernome's nice, puts him down to two, but really, what does two out of a Warlock deck? Mm. And I think, yeah, he's just going to hold back on the Flame Imp. Now, do you hex the Lepernome? No matter what I think here, you want to set up lethal next turn. Right. The, the Power Mace basically represents eight damage in that situation, as long as you can retain a mech. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, it's uh, 14 from the yeah. existing board, plus the 8. That yeah, is so you, good enough. You, you, well, you, you got to give up 2, so it's 12 plus the 8. That is good enough still. You can hex the Leper Gnome here. Yeah. Yeah, he's got 12. He'd have to give up 5, 7 this turn. Mm-hmm. So then you get 5. Yep, you'd still have enough next turn. Uh, I, I just wonder, what does it actually play around? Like it, does anything do two? <laughs> um, I I, I guess I guess ooh. I would have liked to see a totem this turn then to play around second doom guard mm -hmm. uh, or any crazy stuff like wolf rider. Oh, play oh, around. I see a smile. Oh, Forson takes it. It's <laughs> the doom guard number two off the top. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, Saviz is pretty crushed, but he's he's definitely been here before. Where you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and then Doom Guard into Doom Guard. Second Doom Guard. Yeah. Wow. Doom Guards did half of his health that game. Fifteen. Yep. Wow. Well, Forson's actually the first finalist of the event. Uh, yeah, gonna... he's advancing to the final. Uh, if you want to look at the bracket real quick, um, we didn't we didn't quite uh, get all the players to play today. So uh, we did do the first uh, semifinal, but we will see uh, another opening match here in a moment. We will see uh, Dog versus Kibler, and you mentioned Kibler uh, is a player you're expecting to impress us with some uh, some uh, creativity, perhaps. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be a pretty good match. That'll be up next. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys at home are interested in playing the one Nation of Gamers actually puts on a an entire summer circuit, as you can kind of see by the title. Uh, they have open tournaments run all the time for North America and Europe. You can participate in those over at liquidheart.com. The next feature tournament is actually just next weekend. And also you can head over to geico.onog.gg to participate in the raffle for the official TSM PC. And just one more time... We're going to have Crip kind of go over the rules for this tournament before we head into the last match. Uh, I think the rules might be in the title now. I'm not exactly sure. I was watching the stream. But, uh, yeah, the rules are in the title if you guys do want to read them for yourself. Um, why don't we actually go in the rules as we set up for the next match? Uh, I think that might be uh, a, a yeah. little bit more appropriate. But uh, there are some interesting ones. This is like the Chandler Stone type of format where the players have to really push their deck building ability to take down some of these games. Um, we are going to take a little bit of a break before that, though, uh, to set up for the, win the winner interview, which is going to be Forsen Boys, of course, 
we'll have him back for uh, just a, a few moments, maybe tell us uh, how much fun it was uh, beating up Savis. And that'll be coming up. And just after that, we'll get into our final game today. Stick with us. All right, guys, welcome back. We have the winner interview again. Forsen. Welcome back, bro. You made it. You made it. The winner interview again. If you make it to the winter in the win the winner interview for the third time, it means you've won the tournament. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Pretty good. You've uh, you've secured yourself a spot in uh, the finals, so you've basically already made a uh, thousand bucks. Thousand does, bucks. Nice. How does it feel to get a thousand bucks from Geico? That that feels pretty good, man. Pretty what, what are you gonna do with the money? <laughs> oh, so much money. I guess I have to celebrate somehow. Yep. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe you can like get drunk on stream or something really unusual. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> How was it against Saviz? Um, you're you're feeling pretty confident. You were uh, you were behind the game uh, when you had one point and he had two, but uh, you came back and uh, double double Doomguard to seal the deal, man. Yeah, uh, I think that I had one. I really had like uh, at the end of the day, I was thinking like, what do I have to win this? And uh, the only other really uh, ob other option that I had was getting a leper gnome and getting a mortal coil well, yeah. to to kill it off. So I was yeah, I was pretty happy topping that doom guard. You know, I wasted a lot of my bad RNG on stream before this, you know, so that I can have only good RNG now. I guess that's good. Good that's RNG does. I mean, it's kind of a required ingredient to win most of the tournaments. Yeah. So uh, it's certainly nice to have. Um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of screwed up when I was building the decks. As you could see, I had two Magma Ragers in one of the decks. And uh, mm. uh, I also panicked because I had like 30 seconds left to submit the, the Hunter list. Size so 3 and 2 Bomb Blobbers <laughs> for no reason. I was at low tab on the, on the page. I was like, oh shit, I got to go. Like 3 and 2 Bomb Blobbers. I don't know if I could have made something better there. but Seems yeah. good. It, it's all right. Bomb Robbers are a pretty efficient card uh, yeah. when you're playing high tier decks, uh, so it's okay, I guess. Yeah, I think that worked out. Um, actually, I mean, again, we, we, you keep bringing up how you may have screwed up in the deck building process, but um, it's, I think it's just impossible to really come up with like a full list that you're really happy with within the given time frame. I think it's, yeah, it's yeah, kind I'm of the sure. theme that you had to really rush. Uh, like 50 minutes is really a short amount of time. I, yeah, the thing is, I didn't even. Uh, what is the new uh, shaman card called? The uh, the overload for four mana minion. Uh, Fire guard Fire destroyer. Guard. Yeah, that is so insane. I I didn't I even put that yet. in my shaman. Yes, it was it's so good. Elemental. Yeah. Earth elemental. Earth elemental. Yeah. Yeah, it's so many sick cards, and I I just forget to put them in. So I guess. Yeah, but so did Savis. So so did probably a lot of other players. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see any any of those from him either. So I guess I'm we're equal in that regards at least. Mm -hmm. It actually felt like um, you beat his shaman deck the first time because his shaman deck had like no direct damage spells, and like because we were we were watching the discards from the fell reaver, and there uh, were three cards left, and I'm like, oh, Forsen has to lose because there's no way there's less than three direct damage cards left in the deck, and apparently yeah, exactly. there there were. So, yeah, yeah, I, I have a lot of direct damage. I think that's the way to go. Uh, I don't play any Argus's or stuff like that. I just went full face mm -hmm. build uh, with double lava burst, <laughs> double air shock, and yeah. But he went more defensive, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's working out. Certainly a close series. It seemed like you are, uh, you're going to lose that, but uh, never lucky isn't always never, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily for me. A little bit yeah. of esports there. A little bit. Well, congratulations yeah. again. Uh, good Thank luck you. in the finals tomorrow. Uh, we will take another quick break while we set up for uh, our uh, next, our final game of the day. Uh, we are going to see uh, what Dog and Kibler came up with uh, in this challenge as well. So we'll be back in just a second, guys. <laughs> 